everyone and welcome to the next video in our ongoing series building church from home and i'm joining you today from my home where we are going to talk about how you can lead and execute an online music rehearsal so we know that this is not going to compare to meeting together in person and making music together in person but it's a great way to stay connected as a group and to get some practicing in at the same time so just like you would for a normal rehearsal, as the leader, you need to be prepared. And that means choosing the rep for your group, um, doing some score preparation, looking for those tricky parts and making sure you know what you want musically from the piece. Uh, it means preparing your rehearsal plan. Um, even though it's an online rehearsal, you wanna make sure that you're getting everything done that you want to get done. And so many of the things that you would do for your regular rehearsal, you will still want to do for your online rehearsals that you hold. Using a conference call platform, such as Zoom, which we will use here today, set up your meeting and invite all the members of your group by sending them a copy of the meeting link. While it's not a necessity, some choir members may prefer to use their headphones while in rehearsal on the call. So just encourage them to have one in their ears so that they can listen to the recording, sing along with the music and hear it, but encourage them to leave the other one out so that they can hear their voice and how they're doing as they're singing along with their parts. You will need to share the score on the screen. If the score is particularly small, you may want to edit the score in a separate program first to enlarge it and make it a little easier to follow along. You can change the score as the leader when you're on the call, or you can assign that task to another member. The choir members will need to sing along with either a recording of the piece or someone playing the accompaniment on piano. Using a recording can really help singers follow along their parts because they're hearing other singers, but having a piano player on the call as well allows you to rehearse certain sections ahead of running the whole piece. One recommendation for your piano player or the computer that is playing the recording is to disable the audio processing setting. Zoom optimizes for speech, so making that change will really allow for better quality of the music that you're playing. When it comes time to sing, all the choir members will need to be muted, which you can actually control as the leader from the host computer. The time lag between computers will not allow everyone to be heard together. So this means you won't be able to hear them as a group, but at least they are learning the music and practicing. As the conductor, you will still need to be engaging, um, maybe even more so than when you're uh, leading the choir live. Um, it'll feel very awkward for you, but remember it feels very awkward and isolating for the singer who's sitting at home, singing their part kind of by themselves into <laughs> or at a computer screen. So the more encouraging and engaging you can be in your leading, uh, the choir member is gonna be more engaged in the singing that they're doing from home. Another little thing to consider is that when you stop, try not to be too lengthy uh, in your commentary or the comments that you're making. Uh, the best way to keep singers engaged is to keep them singing. So while you can still stop and work on certain sections and certain parts in certain sections, just remember that if you can keep the rehearsal moving and keep your group singing, they're more likely to stay engaged in what they're doing. So again, while this will never compare to our music making that we do in person, it is a great way to stay connected with your group and get some practicing in. So if you have any other questions about how to do that or comments about anything in today's video, please reach out to us in the Music and Gospel Arts Department. Happy practicing!